Before I begin the sermon proper, can I say some thank yous? Thank you, Martin, to you and to the people of this community for your welcome of this, this, this morning and your willingness to host this service for this particular Sunday. A thank you to all of you and through you to those you represent, that is the Christians up and down this land in different communities and churches who are concerned about these issues and who in many ways give of their energy and their action and their prayers and their service and their time in meeting the needs of those who are homeless or in other kinds of housing need. Those who give of their time, 12,000 of them through these months as volunteers in winter shelters. Those who are engaged in different groups within their communities, lobbying and persuading and engaging to try and get affordable housing in their places. Uh, Those who in all kinds of ways are giving of their time in voluntary capacities and some in paid capacities within different Christian organizations which are concerned about these matters. A huge thank you through you to all of them for their efforts, for their commitment. If that wasn't there, Stephen's always in already indicated in a sense, if the commitment of Christian people and churches and Christian groups was not there, then the situation would be even worse than it actually is for those who are in need in our country, especially those who are without good homes. If you are able to visit Capernaum, you will find there the remains of a small town dating from both before and after the time of Jesus. You can find the synagogue there, in fact two built one on top of the other. You can see the street patterns of the houses. Jesus, we heard in the gospel, made his home in Capernaum. Capernaum is situated on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee and you can see immediately that the main activity of many of its people would have been fishing. You can picture a busy little place where probably people would actually have had a reasonable quality of life with abundant fish from the lake and fertile land on which vegetables and fruit could be grown. Jesus made his home at Capernaum. Near to Capernaum ran a road called the Via Maris, an ancient trade route connecting Egypt with Syria and beyond. So through Capernaum would have passed a rich variety of people speaking no doubt different languages, bringing their cultures, their trades and their learning And the people of Capernaum might well have offered hospitality to those travelers. Jesus made his home at Capernaum. Yet, despite all these visitors, people coming and going, there are no signs of defensive walls around Capernaum. Is this an indication that it was a relatively secure and peaceful place, unthreatened? Jesus made his home in Capernaum. It was at the lakeside in Capernaum that, as we heard in our gospel reading, Jesus met Simon, Peter, and Andrew, followed by James and John, and there he called them to follow him and to fish for people. Capernaum, therefore, could in a sense be said to be the place where the community of the followers of Jesus first began to take shape. Jesus made his home in Capernaum. And if we turn from the Gospel of Matthew to those of Mark and Luke, we hear that Jesus visited the house of Simon and Andrew in Capernaum, where people in Capernaum seem to have lived in extended families. Simon's mother-in-law was with a high fever. Jesus heals her. And that evening, many, the whole city, according to Mark, gather around the door of the house seeking healing for their sicknesses. In Capernaum, you can see what is reputed to be that house, albeit with a Byzantine church and then a 20th century structure built on top of it. Jesus made his home in Capernaum. And where was that lakeside shore where the risen Jesus came to share breakfast with his downhearted followers? It doesn't actually say so, but it sounds very like Capernaum, the place to which Simon and the others would naturally return and try to take up their old way of fishing. Jesus made his home in Capernaum. Jesus moved the 40 or so miles from Nazareth to Capernaum and there he made his home, the gospel tells us. 
Interestingly, this is all rather far from the idea of Jesus as the wandering son of man with nowhere to lay his head. Perhaps, despite its convenience for those of us who wish to portray Jesus as identifying with the homeless in this way, the idea of Jesus having nowhere to go, nowhere to call home, is a wee bit overblown. Yes, he did wander from place to place, as did many others in that time and place and culture, but it also seems that he did actually have somewhere to call home. He did have that place where, as per the poet Robert Frost, if he turned up, they would take him in, de- in, in where they would take him in, indeed, where they would take him in with warmth and joy. So we may not have here a picture, as it were, of the homeless Jesus who you weren't able to have outside, sharing in the experience of homelessness or other privation. But what we do have here is a very clear statement about the importance, the value, and the purpose of home, a place to belong, a place of welcome and warmth, a place of shelter and security, a place for friendship and for family, a place of provision and nourishment, a place for learning and for growth, a place for healing and for rest. And son of God, though he may have been, Jesus needed that as much as any other would in order for him to flourish, in order for him to be fruitful, in order for him to be human, Jesus made his home in Capernaum. Too many in this city, too many in this country, too many in this world do not have a place in which to make their home. And that is a statement, yes, about walls and roofs, especially about walls and roofs which are available with constancy and affordability and at good quality. But but it's about much more than that too. It's about all that comes into mind when we use that word home. It's about security, about access to employment and fulfilling activity, whether that's paid or voluntary. It's about privacy and also about relatedness in community to family, to friends, and to neighbors. It's about time and space and, yes, money for leisure. It is about having enough food, food that is good and affordable. It's about health of body and of mind and of spirit. And without a place that is home, all of that will not be. Within a short distance from here, But also in so many other places, there are people who literally have nowhere. And some of you may well have seen some of them on your way here this morning. There are others who have somewhere, but it is very far from being home. In this city, the housing economy is such that even the professional, the employed and the well-educated have declining hope of reaching that much-hyped goal of home ownership. In some places, as we know well, we need to build tens of thousands, indeed hundreds of thousands, of new homes, and we need them not tomorrow, but actually last year or even ten years ago. While in other places, houses lie empty and derelict. Now we know it's all very complicated. The vacant and potentially affordable houses are often in the places where the employment isn't. And where the employment is, people often just cannot afford to live there. Or if they can just about do so, they are squashed into multi-occupancy or into very small spaces, even if the blurb describes that small space as bijou. And a relatively few including, if we're honest, some of us here this morning are able to float above all of that, though even for us, our children and our grandchildren may not. And I hardly dare take you in your thinking to those for whom home was once in Aleppo, or who live under an iron sheet on the outskirts of an African city, or who for any number of reasons fear that they will no longer be able to stay in the place where they are. Jesus made his home at Capernaum and every human being needs somewhere that is home. 
And that is for me a gospel imperative, meaning that we who are the followers of Jesus have no option but to work and pray that every human being will have somewhere that is home. And the good news is that every day and every week there are those Christian people and others with them who are offering shelter in times of winter cold, who are finding ways to house the asylum seeker and the refugee. We heard this morning about that. Who are making new housing areas into places where it's good to live. Who are working to free surplus property, church owned and other, to be used for truly affordable housing. Who are active in their local community to counter selfish opposition to needed development. And who are engaging in political and public debate on all of these issues and more. And given that this is also the week of prayer for Christian unity, as we've heard, most of this goes on without people worrying too much whether the person working or praying alongside is Methodist or Pentecostal, independent, reformed, orthodox, Baptist, Salvationist, Roman Catholic, or even an Anglican bishop. (laughs) I don't suppose Jesus needed a key to get into Peter's house in Capernaum. Though I have that slightly naughty picture of Simon Peter's mother-in-law taking Jesus aside and saying, here you are, dear, just have a key to the door and then you can turn up whenever you like. You know you're always welcome here. She might have done, who knows. But most of us do have a key. We have a key in our pocket or our purse or our bag. And later today, we will use that key to open a door. And through that door, for many of us, though not perhaps for all, is likely to be the place and the space and the people who for us, in some sense, make up home. Today, we're being given another key. It's a blank key. It's not a key to any particular place, because that might have been dangerous to give you those. (laughs) But it's for you to put on your key ring with your other keys. So that whenever you use your other key, you see this key. And it stands, if you like, for anyone who does not have a key to a place that they can call home. So each time you open your own door into your own home, perhaps you might think about those people and pray for them and ask what you can do to make things different. Jesus, even Jesus, needed a home. Without that home, he would not have been the person that he was. You and I need homes. People around us in this city need homes. Everyone across this world needs a home. Jesus made his home in Capernaum. What are we able to do? to make home for others, that all may have a home. Amen.